Tonight, true stories of caring efforts to save lives on Rescue 911. We begin on the morning of October 23rd, 1990, along a foggy stretch of highway near Russellville, Arkansas. You can see these log trucks going down the road all the time with these big, huge pine logs hanging out the back. And I don't know how many times you'll pull up behind those and just look at that and think, my God, you know, if a person ever hit one of them, you know, it would be over. Around 8 a.m., Sharon Murray was heading east down Highway 64. Every morning, she took her daughter Jennifer to the school where she worked after dropping 13-month-old Tessa at the babysitter's. Burl Williams was also driving east toward the bridge where Highway 64 crosses Lake Dardanelle. I was on my way to work. It was a real pretty day. The standard fog coming off the water. Sun was real bright, uh, just coming over the hill when you're looking to the east there. Trucker Bobby Noakes was hauling a load of logs. I was coming down Mill Creek Road and got to Highway 64. I looked both ways and started to make a turn off of 64. But I had, shoot, well, I didn't see nothing coming over the hill. I done straightened out and started to pull out in my lane. She hit the truck. I just looked in my mirror and I've seen her on my log. I heard the impact and saw the van bouncing up and down as the truck was coming to a stop. You could see those logs coming all the way out. When I got out of the pickup going up there, I didn't expect to find anybody alive. When we continue. I just had a sinking feeling. I just thought, how in the world are we going to be able to get anyone out of this? It... When the van carrying Sharon Murray and her two young daughters slammed into the back of the logging truck, several logs came crashing through her windshield. Passing motorist Burl Williams stopped to see if there was anything he could do for the accident victims. When Burl got to the van, Sharon was struggling to free herself. She kept saying, yeah, I've killed my baby or my baby's dead. So I started looking in the back, and there was one girl in the seat behind the driver's seat. I could make out the baby carriage, and then I could see the one arm, or part of an arm, sticking up. I felt frantic in being trapped and not being able just to get to my babies immediately. Get the These logs go all the way through the back of my van, and I know that my baby is right there in the path where these that these logs have gone. The logs were just on her, and I thought she was dead. Just down the road, Robert Hollyfield, a former EMT, was on his way to work. As I got closer and closer, the very first thing I saw was that it was a log truck. I had a friend that was uh, killed uh, by basically the same situation when I was in high school. I'm an emergency medical technician. Is everyone okay? Anyone hurt? My baby's in there. As I looked into the van, the real horror, you know, uh, began to uh, stick in my throat. Has anyone called an email? I'll go call. Make sure to tell them we need rescue. Hope County EMS and rescue units were dispatched to the scene. I could see that she was still in danger with the logs laying on her and, you know, these huge logs, they were supported by nothing except just her car seat. Tessa, honey. Tessa. My primary concern at that time was her breathing problems. The hip being twisted up and the seat literally caving in on top of the child seemed to be causing a problem. Just a minute. And so I was really concerned about whether or not internal injuries were beginning to, to take their toll. As we came around the log truck, I just had a sinking feeling. I just thought, how in the world are we going to be able to get anyone out of this? Uh, it, it was an awesome sight. 
paramedic Ormond Peters took charge of the medical situation as soon as he arrived on the scene. Sharon and her older daughter were taken to an ambulance to be checked for injuries. The extrication attempt was under the supervision of EMT David Moore. We crushed the baby's lower extremities. My main stress came in from something shifting. I didn't want the baby to become injured or killed if anything shifted. Two 50-foot logs were resting directly on her car seat. Until we got her out, we really didn't know how serious her injuries were, and we didn't know if by lifting the pressure, she would start bleeding internally or externally. Our top priority was to stabilize everything as best as possible, which included the van and the logs. The rescue workers anchored the ton of logs with chains staked into the ground. Glass up. I can't even slide my hand down in there, so she, we have zero time. We had the two logs coming through the van, but they were only two of a truckload, and they were on the bottom of the load, and I knew that if we shifted the two logs, that it could potentially shift the whole load. Here we go. Go ahead. Okay, four glass. So we're we're going to put just enough pressure on those marlin and keep them from shifting inward. We're not going to try to pull them to the south at all. After stabilizing the van and the logs, we all had the same yes. feeling that the best way to move the logs away from the infant was to lift them straight up with airbags. But the Polk County Rescue Unit had never used airbags in this way before. Okay, sir. Look, here's the dog. You see it? Here's a teddy. It was almost as if they were made for this rescue. Here you go. Here's your, here's your teddy bear. Can you hold on to that? And the beauty of it is, is that we had only had the rescue airbags uh, just several months. Okay, red hose goes on bottom. So if I forget, somebody knows. And we were all ready. Everyone was ready and in position. And then we kind of said, okay, let's go with it. I'm gonna, I'm, let me get You're my hand in there. We eased the logs up very, very slowly. We were talking about moving those logs just millimeters at a time. How's the van, David? The van's doing fine. I had my hands around Tessa, and I was feeling all around, trying to see how much farther we needed to go to be able to bring her out. Okay, I'm, see, I'm, I'm, get, I'm feeling it. Stop, stop, feeling. stop, stop. Okay, I think we can slide her out now. Okay, we, need help. Help. Okay. we need to make sure, Marlon, that we we'll slide her out. Okay, we got somebody outside to help out there. Okay. Yeah, I'll be sure it's okay. level of consciousness. Yeah. Slate not. All right, here we go. Here we go. Just slide her up on the back this point. There you go. Okay, good job. There we go. The rescuers extricated Tessa from under the crushing load of logs in less than 20 minutes. If a child is crying, that means that she's doing good. It's when she gets quiet and just lays there, that's when I worry. And the way her lungs were screaming, bellowing out, I knew that she had a lot of energy and it was sweet music to my ears. Tessa had suffered no serious injuries. We were very lucky. One of those logs came so close to her, she had the slightest little skin place right on the top of her head. I mean, there was not a fraction of an inch difference to those logs, and she would not be with us. We wouldn't have our Tessa today. The whole Murray family is grateful that Tessa was saved. I was not two miles from my house when this happened. Had she not been in a car seat, in a very good car seat, she wouldn't be here today. Because she was contained in that car seat, it protected her from the logs. It caught the car seat, and she kind of rolled with the punches. After I found out that everyone was safe, that Tessa was okay, I guess I was probably about as happy a man as you've, you've ever met. I feel happy, because everybody was okay, and I love my family. I really appreciate the job that rescuers did and the care they took to get Tessa out. She's just her happy, cheerful little self every day, which we're all very thankful for.